Although the, uh, there is, what's that? If you need a partner or a partner someplace, they need to go in a park now with this? That is, I haven't heard about that, but that is entirely kind of possible. So you wouldn't have to then, you know, remove vessels from your leg and stuff like that. Um, right now, from what I've been able to read, the clip code needs to some kind of uh, needs more study, but most of these things need more study. That's kind of a problem. But what loves like people with anemia um, and just anyone in the blood, um, blood transfusions, you know, there's a real problem with getting people to donate blood. And the blood banks are always asking for more people to donate. If we're able to figure out some way to generate not artificial blood, but stem cell derived blood, we wouldn't need to ask anybody for it. We could just make it. So imagine how that would, how that would help us about everybody. Um, baldness. Um, there are stem cell populations that uh, can be used to you know, generate hair follicles. There's been at least one paper that, that's shown that there is a potential for the therapeutic application of that. The same teeth. We use stem cells to culture teeth in a dish. Um, they use that with uh, mouse embryonic stem cells. And they just implant these little pro teeth that are going in a dish into the jaw and they, they grow in the teeth. Uh, deafness. Um, for some people, deafness is caused by the loss of particular cochlear cells in their heart. Uh, and uh, it's been shown that mouse olfactory stem cells, or the stem cells that are in those, uh, can be differentiated from cochlear cells. So there's a potential for that. Blindness. Um, there's a guy who's transplanted uh, retinal sheets. He actually takes these stem cells and turns them into these little sheets of retinal cells. He implants them into the retinas. And he's actually done it with one human who's had the benefit. She had the 2800 vision, and now she has uh, 2080. Not perfect, but sort of better. She was legally blind. Um, uh, corneal stem cells, uh, if you have any corneal injuries, um, corneal is kind of weird because it has no blood to um, So it actually you know, might be a little bit more beneficial than that. Yeah? Okay. If, if you're taking these stem cells, well, I, for instance, about the teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And to the key What? What makes it? Make only one tooth and not two teeth. Or molar. Well, <laughs> it's, 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 it, it, it's sort of. How it's there? It's sort of it's not, it's much the same way that the teeth, your, your, your normal teeth. So when I'll make one tooth. Well, if they have. What they do is they generate a pro tooth, so it's like one little tooth in a dish. And it, it'll grow, but it'll, it'll stop growing once it, you know, hits. It's not going to, it's not going to fit around. I just want to do Well, the same things that make your teeth stop. I mean, the signals that they get from your mouth and blood supply and all that stuff. They're internal signals that are in the cells that they know, when, as they know, in quotes. But you know, the signals that are within the cell cause it to stop and be appropriate. Um, probably another big one, cancer. And this is actually not, um, not using transplantable stem cells. But cancer cells, if you think about it, cancer cells are remarkably similar to stem cells in that they self-renew. They run the all the time, and they're relatively undifferentiated. So, there's been um, a lot of talk over the past couple of decades, but only recently has there been some, some real significant research suggesting that there may be uh, a stem cell, and there's a hypothesis that stem cells or a type of stem cells may actually be what gives rise to cancer. And, like I said, there has been a lot of a lot of data that's come out recently in the past few years that's indicated more and more strongly that this might be so. Um, if this is the case, then we might be going about this all wrong. It might be better for us to target those cancer stem cells specifically, and that might be the only way to really cure cancer. And um, I'll show you just an example of this. On the, on the left, you've got um, this is this is what the hypothesis says. You've got that yellow cell, which is a cancer stem cell, and it's creating all these 
cancer cells and its progeny and those are all the blue cells around them. Right now what we do is push on the bottom, the conventional cancer therapy where we can target those cancer cells, which are different from any stem cell population. They're fast growing, um, they're resistant to drugs, uh, or they're not resistant, not so resistant to drugs. And so we're able to kill off those cancer cells, the tumor cells, but the stem cells are still there, and the tumors come back. Whereas if we're able to target, devise drugs to target those cancer stem cells, stem cells specifically, <laughs> kill the thing that's actually causing the, the cancer, and then the tumor would might rest on its own, or we could use, you know, same chemo therapy if we really needed to, to, to kill off those cells. And that would represent an, an honest and goodness for your cancer. Now, the uh, AAAS, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, has issued a, a report on stem cell research, and they've made some recommendations that I'm just going to, I thought I'd share these with us, I'm going to read these off. They say that human stem cell research holds enormous potential for contributing to our understanding of fundamental human biology. Although it's not possible to predict the outcomes from basic research, such studies will offer the real possibility for treatments and ultimately for cures for many diseases for which adequate therapies do not exist. This research raises ethical and policy concerns, but these are not unique to stem cell research. The existing federal regulatory and professional control mechanisms combined with informed public dialogue provide a sufficient framework for oversight of stem cell research. Federal funding for stem cell research is necessary in order to promote investment in promising line of research to encourage sound public policy and to foster public confidence for the conduct of such research. Public and private research on human stem cells derived from all sources should be conducted in order to contribute to the rapidly advancing and changing scientific understanding of the potential of human stem cells from these various sources. Public funding should be provided for embryonic stem cell and embryonic stem cell research, but not at this time for activities involved in the isolation of embryonic stem cells, about which there remains continuing debate. So they're basically saying public funds are necessary, but for now, let's not use public funds to actually harvest these embryonic stem cells because there does remain this debate. Embryonic stem cells should be obtained from embryos resulting remaining from infertility procedures after the embryos regenerate, have made the decision that they do not wish to preserve them. This should be explicitly renewed prior to securing the presenter's consent to use the embryos in the cell research. Consent is very important. In order to allow persons who hold diverse form positions on the status of the early embryo to participate in stem cell research to the greatest degree possible without compromising their principles, and also to foster sound science, stem cells should be identified with respect to their original source. So people, if they don't want to use embryonic stem cells, they should know which ones are embryonic stem cells, they don't use them. If you're interested in the full report, it is available online on this website. Uh, you have the address there on your hand. Up. So now, sort of transitioning from the science into the ethical problem, and going into what Kevin and Kevin are talking about. The problem is that embryos are regarded by many to have equivalent ethical status to humans. And thus, the kind of stem cell harvesting is viewed as killing life to save life. That's what President is putting. The crux of this issue rests on how humanity, the concept of humanity, is defined and conferred. <coughs> While we're thinking about that, I'll post some other ethical conundrums that are relevant and similar to this. Chimeras, I don't know if they refer to chimeras. Chimeras are a combination of cells or DNA from two different species. And on the lower right hand here, what you see is a geek. This is a chimera of a goat and a sheep. And you see, I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but there are patches of this animal that are woolly, and those are sheep cells. And there are patches on this animal that are not woolly, those are goat cells. This is actually made by taking a goat embryo and a sheep embryo and fusing it together and letting it grow. Because goats and sheep are relatively closely related, you know, they don't know being viable. You've got this animal. What is it? Is it a goat? Or is it a sheep? Hard to say. What was it gestating in? Was it a sheep or Probably a sheep. I don't know. But uh, regardless, if, if, if this is going, this is not a self-replicating organism. If this were to have progeny, it would be it would give birth to either goats or sheep. It wouldn't give birth to another geek. Okay, so whichever, whichever other reproductive cells in this animal are going to pass along. Not the, uh, if it's, it's not sheep, it's not going to give